चारे जय राधा माधव कुंजा बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंजा बिहारी जाया गोपी जनावला गिरबारदारी गोपी जनावला यशोदानंदा व्रजजान रंजनाशोदानंदा व्रजजन रंजना यमुना तीरावन चारी जाय राधा माधवा कुंजा बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंजा बिहारी जय गोपी जना वाला गिरिवार धारी गोपी जनवाला गिरिवार दारी गोपी जनवाला गिरिवार दशोदा नंदा व्रज जान रंजना यशोदा नंदा व्रजा जन रंजना यमुना तीरावन चारी यमुना तीरावन चारी जय राधा माधव राधा माधव राधे जय प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु पदा शिल प्रोपाद की जाए यम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिवार के चार्य स्त्रोत्र सदस्य श्रीमद अभाई चरणारविंद भक्तिवंत स्वयं शिल प्रोपाद की जाए अनंत कोति वैष्णव वृंद की ब्रह्म से कहो श्री कृष्ण चितांजय पुणितानंद श्री द्वैत गिरादार श्री वसादी गौर भक्तविंद की ग्रंथरा श्रीमद भागवत की नित गौर प्रेमानंदे ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल द बॉडीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल द बॉडीज All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. 
to the lotus feet of Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Om Gyanati Vinandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Shaksurum Militan Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitan Yena Bhutale Sayan Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Sham Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Scham He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter 15, text 43 and 44. Chapter entitled, The Pandavas Retire Timely. Thank you for coming to the Bhagavatam class. A few more people. Little by little, this class is filling up again. It was during the COVID time, there was like 10 people here. Now the numbers are increasing. So thank you. You made it. Okay, text 43. Chiravasa niraharo. I'll actually, I'll, I'll do text 43 by myself, and then we'll do text 44 together. <clears throat> you get two for the price of one today. Chiravasa niraharo. Badavam mukta murdaja. Darshayang atmano rupam. Yadom mata pishachabad Anaveksha mano niraga Anaveksha mano niragat Asrimbam badiroyata Translation and purpose by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai After that, Maharaj Yudhisthir dressed himself in torn clothing Gave up eating all solid foods voluntarily became dumb and, less, and let his hair hang loose. All these combined to make him look like an urchin or madman with no occupation. He did not depend on his brothers for anything. And just like a deaf man, he heard nothing. Purport. Thus being freed from all external affairs, he had nothing to do with imperial life or family prestige. 
And for all practical purposes, he poses himself exactly like an inert mad urchin and did not speak of material affairs. He had no dependence on his brothers, who had all along been helping him. This stage of complete independence from everything is also called the purified stage of fearlessness. So what is the purified stage of fearlessness uh, referred to? I just read it. Complete independence from everything. That's the, co the purified stage of consciousness. Something to meditate upon. And actually this is kind of the theme of these verses. It's talking about detachment. Text 44. Please repeat. Udichim praviva Udichim praviva se pravive sasham Udichim pravive sasham Gata purva mahatma vi Gata purva mahatma vi Ridi Brahma Param Dhyayam Ridi Brahma Param Dhyayam Navarte Tayatogata Navarte Tayatogata Udichim Pravivesham Gata Purva Mahatma Vi Ridi Brahma Param Dhyayam Navarte Tayatogata Bolo Navarte Tayatogata Udichim Pravive Shasham Gata Purva Mahatma Vi Ridi Brahma Param Dhyayam Navarte Tayatogata Udichim pravive sasham Gata purva mahatma vi Ridi brahma param dhyayam Navarte tayatogata Udichim parive sasham Gata Purva Mahatma Vi Ridi Brahma Param Dhyayan Navarte Tayatogataha Ladies Udichim Pravive Shasham Gata Purva Mahatma Vi Ridi Brahma Param Dhyayam Navarte Tayatogataha Udichim Pravive Shasham Gata Purva Mahatma Vihi Ridi Brahma Param Dhyayam Navarte Tayatogataha Udichim Pravive Sasham Gata Purva Mahatma Vihi Ridi Brahma Param Dhyayam 
Navarte Tayato Gataha Udichim, the northern side, Pravivesha Asham, those who wanted to enter there. Ngata Purvam, the path accepted by his forefathers. Maha Atmavihi, by the broad minded. Riddhi, within the heart. Brahma, the supreme. Param, Godhead. Dhyayam, constantly thinking of. Na Avartita Pass his days Yataha Whatever Gataha Went Translation He then started towards the, the north Treading the path accepted by his forefathers and great men To devote himself completely to the thought of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he lived in that way wherever he went, purport. It is understood from this verse that Maharaj Yudhisthir followed in the footsteps of his forefathers and the great devotees of the Lord. We have discussed many times before that the system of Varnashram Dharma, as it was strictly followed by the inhabitants of the world, specifically by those who inhabited the Aryabharta province of the world emphasizes the importance of leaving all household con connections at a certain stage of life. The training and education was so imparted and thus a respectable person like Maharaj Yudhisthir had to leave all family connection for self-realization and going back to Godhead. No king or respectable gentleman will continue family life till the end because that was considered suicidal and against the interest of the perfection of human life. In order to be free from all family encumbrances and devote oneself 100% in the devotional service of Lord Krishna, this system is always recommended for everyone because it is the path of authority. The Lord instructs in the Bhagavad Gita 1862 that one must become a devotee of the Lord at least at the last stage of one's life. A sincere soul of the Lord like Maharaj Yudhisthir must abide by this instruction of the Lord for his own interest. The specific words Brahma Param Indicate that indicate Lord Sri Krishna. This is corroborated in the Bhagavad Gita by Arjuna with reference to great authorities like Asita, Devala, Narada, and Vyas. Thus, Maharaj Yudhisthir, while leaving home for the north, constantly remembered Lord Sri Krishna within himself, following in the footsteps of his forefathers, as well as the great devotees of all times. So I'll read the previous verse again. After that, Maharaj Yudhisthir dressed himself in torn clothing, gave up eating all solid foods, voluntarily became dumb and let his hair hang loose. All this combined to make him look like an urchin or madman with no occupation. He did not depend on his brothers for anything, and just like a deaf man, he heard nothing. He then started towards the north, treading the path accepted by his forefathers and great men to devote himself completely to the thought of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and he lived in that way wherever he went. Hare Krishna. So this chapter is entitled The Pandavas Retire Timely. And uh, we are, it's a very interesting uh, chapter with many points leading to this moment of Yudhisthir actually giving up the kingdom. And um, 
all these events are successively taking place for the appearance of the Bhagavatam. This is actually the history. The first canto is, uh, an is describing all the, all the events that need to, needed to take place for the Bhagavatam to appear. So we heard how Krishna departed this world and Arjuna went to see him and uh, Yudhisthira was asking him all kinds of questions in regards to uh, uh, Arjuna was so kind of overwhelmed he could not even say that Krishna had departed. Yeah. And a very, very important instruction I think is wor worth explaining because it's very much connected to what we're going to speak about today, but is that Ayuna could only find uh, um, solace and, 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 and a relief from the misery, from the, from the pain that he was experiencing by Krishna having left this world was by actually remembering Krishna's instructions in the form of the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. So then, this man, then, uh, as the chapter is entitled, the Pada, Pada, Krishna departed, then uh, Parikshit was enthroned, and then the Pandavas retired. Yudhisthira Maharaj, now he's leaving this world along with, with the Pandavas. And we, we heard in the previous verses how, through this meditation, he kind of uh, renounced everything in this world. Mm. And then we come to these verses, which in one sense describe a type of renunciation that we don't see so much in ISKCON nowadays. In fact, it's not encouraged, right? Do we see the bodies, you know, with matted hair and long hair and, you know, dirty looking? Huh? This is not uh, the type of sannyas that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu always appeared very clean and very, uh, you know, unshaved and certainly uh, not like a madman. But this was the traditional uh, system in former times and is part of the Varnashram uh, culture that the last, the, la the fag end of one's life, one should actually renounce everything and, 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 and fully focus on Krishna consciousness. So then Yudhisthira Maharaj will leave and then Parikshu Maharaj will be enthroned and then of course that will uh, mean that he will be cursed and then you know uh, Parikshu Maharaj will sit by the, by the bank of the Ganges and then Sukadeva Goswami will appear which will appear in the second canto. So everything, all these chapters, it's very interesting how everything is very, very nicely presented leading to the appearance of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And this is so important because actually we're talking here about renunciation and full dependence on the Lord. But how do we actually uh, are going to uh, achieve that renunciation and how do we depend on the Lord? What dependence on the Lord means? Mm. And uh, renunciation, there is a, you know, we, we may become a little confused and bewildered when we hear about this type of renunciation. Like, like it's been described here that, you know, is renouncing everything material. But actually, this is not our process. This is the result of our process. Meaning that, you know, renunciation is not an anga of bhakti. Actually, renunciation does not give birth to bhakti. Bhakti gives birth to renunciation. So in the case of Yudhisthira Maharaj, he had been, you know, depending, I mean, he had been a great devotee throughout his life, and he had performed his duties through every stage during his life. Uh, and as a result of that, he was able to do this at the end. He was able to give up fam family life. He, will be, he was able to renounce everything. And 
you know, he was the emperor of the whole world. Definitely, he, he could be more under the influence and then the illusion that he had something to renounce when you are the emperor of the whole world. Most of us have very little to renounce, right? Uh, can put it in a suitcase, most of our goods, you know. And so it's not much to renounce, but when you have like a whole empire, you know, empire, the whole world. Huh? But he had actually realized that nothing belongs to him. So that's Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prajojita Janayitya Ashuvai Ragyan Yanan Chat Yahai to come. That by rendering devotional service to the personality of Godhead, one immediately acquires costless knowledge and uh, detachment from the world. So this is our process. Our process is actually to engage cultivating Krishna consciousness. And automatically that detachment will come. At the same time, we hear by, by hearing these things, we, we understand that actually renunciation is required. We have to give things up. We have to say no to, to Maya at one point. We have to just let things go. And usually that doesn't come so easily hmm? because we have been, uh, you know, conditioned for many, many lifetimes. So the problem that we face sometimes is that you know, when we are not able to renounce, that can create some conflict in the heart. We may feel very despondent all these years. I'm still not, giving, not able to give these things up. Huh? But what is the solution? The solution is that we have to actually take more shelter of Krishna consciousness. Hearing about Krishna, like it is described here, that dependence on the Lord you see, the point is that by the execution of devotional service, because we are acting according to our nature, we are actually uh, becoming satisfied. When we act according to our nature, that brings a deep satisfaction of the heart that makes us detached from the world. It makes the material allurements to look insignificant when we experience the higher taste of Krishna consciousness. So our goal is to become absorbed in this higher taste. It's not to renounce. Uh, it's not to renounce in the sense that it's not to practice renunciation. This is, you know, Prabhupada will often, uh, or, I don't know often, but he, he, he made the joke one time, they came to him and they said about this big guru in India, I don't remember who he was, you know. And this person, he will not even sleep on the same place there was money being kept, you know. And one time they were offering him money and he was like, you know, like repulsed by the, the money. And I took a picture of him and Prabhupada said, you bring me a million dollars and take a picture of me embracing it. Because huh? that's the actual renunciation. That's Yukta Vairagya. Is complete renunciation. You have falguk vairagya, which is shallow, is superficial. Why is superficial? Because it indicates that we have actually, we think that we have something to renounce. It means we are not in Krishna consciousness. Because there is nothing to renounce. Nothing belongs to us. Everything is Krishna's. So na naturally, renunciation comes as a byproduct. Bhakti parisanu rabo, bhakti parisanu rabo viraktir, anyatra chai satrika ekakala, yatas natasius. Anyway, I forgot now. Tusti chusti chut apayor nugasan. It says that actually, by the execution of devotional service, three things took take place simultaneously. One is then that one gets direct perception of the personality of Godhead, bhakti, parisan, ubhavo, viraktir. One get actually a personal, one get experience of the Lord. Eh? And 
the other thing is that one actually uh, bec Virakti one becomes detached eh? one becomes detached one gets that perception of the Lord and um, what is the other one? I forgot now Bhakti Paris knowledge is direct perception got knowledge and 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 uh, virakti anyways eluding me right now just as the same as the same uh, in the same way that when one eats one gets yeah nourishment one gets three things when we eat three things take place simultaneously one gets satisfaction that takes the, in the, the place in the form of bhakti eh? nourishment one gets no satisfaction one gets nourishment in the form you know like food you know energy so when we perform devotional service, that also, uh, you know, we get, uh, how many eluding me right now the word? No, no, Vairagya comes as, and one automatically becomes detached. Like one, there is cessation of hunger. So one gets direct perception of the Lord, and one gets satisfaction, one gets nourishment, and one gets detachment from the world. So this detachment from the world is explained, it's like cessation of hunger. Basically it means that you're no longer, like you're not, it's not like you're practicing detachment in the sense of you're trying to stay away from the objects of the senses. But even in the presence of the, sen of, uh, of the sense objects, you're not attached anymore. So renunciation, so the point here is that actually you cannot be actually practicing bhakti and not be renounced. If you are not renounced, if we are not developing renunciation from the, spirit, from the material world, it means we are not actually practicing bhakti properly. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to create like a contradiction here because on one but the point I'm trying to make here is that on one hand, renunciation is not our process, it's not the means for purification, it's the result of purification. So naturally, as we are practicing Krishna consciousness, we have to give things up. We have to cultivate that mood of actually renouncing the world. And what is the thing, the most important, it's not about externals. What is the most important, what is the actual thing that we have to renounce? Ah, the false ego. This is actually the, 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 the main, the main, the main point. So here, when we are hearing about, we're hearing a lot about external renunciation, but actually the real renunciation is the renunciation of the mentality eh, that I have something to renounce, that anything belongs to me. That I am the possessor, that, that I am the controller, that I am the enjoyer of everything. Like Krishna teaches in Bhagavad Gita, Nirma Nirahankara, Samadukka Sukakshami, is that the, my devotee, he is free from, he doesn't his, himself a proprietor, and he is free from false ego. It's a person, eh, and he's equal in happiness and distress. Such person actually is very, very dear to me. Hmm? So, what makes one a devotee is not his detachment. What makes one a devotee is his devotion. And when one is devoted to the Lord, naturally he is free from false ego and is free from the sense of proprietorship. Am I making sense? Yeah? Making sense? Because. I've seen it before, you know, we, we, even myself, I've been bewildered by this idea that actually, you know, someone, some people are just renounced by their previous karmas, you know, but they're not devotees. Someone may be renounced and maybe a madman, like here it is described, like you, this Maharaj, look like a madman. Some, some, some mad, mad people, they're very renounced. They can lie on the floor, you know, on the streets, you know. That they make them advance spiritually? Are they advanced because of that? What makes one advance is his meditation and his dedication to the Lord. 
That's actually the goal of our Krishna consciousness. That we are able to devote, we're, we're, we are actually, we are not the renouncers, we are the dedicators. We dedicate our life to Krishna. And many of us, we may be at different levels of renunciation. By default, you know, and you cannot, you cannot force, you cannot become more renounced than you are. Because if you do, you'll fall down. You can't. It's just we have, we can, we can only start from where we are at. And that's why the whole process of Vanasham Dharma is there, to take us step, step by step by step, different stages, so that we can actually gradually give up the material world. And the means to do that is through deep absorption in Krishna consciousness. When we are, and, and, and that's why I was referring before that the, the point that is being made earlier in this chapter is how Arjuna, he was able to mitigate the misery and the suffering that he was experiencing by becoming deeply absorbed in the, um, in the, me the message of the Lord. By becoming absorbed in the sound vibration. And by doing so, when we are actually practicing Krishna consciousness, by acting according to our nature. This is the point. Renunciation doesn't mean acting according to our nation, our nature. We're still not acting according to our nature. We still think that we are something that we are not. But when we act according to who really are, we are being the devotees of Krishna. That is actually what brings us to our natural, normal state of, of, of life. And this is what Yudhisthir Maharaj was able to achieve uh, through his whole life. You know, through his whole life, he executed his duties according to ta according to the, you know, to the according to the stage ha he was in. So, how do we actually uh, understand? what level we are in and what we should do and what we should not do, how do we do that? Because, you know, we're talking about yukta vairagya, right? And I said, well, Prabhu, you know, I, I have to engage everything in the service of the Lord. I remember one time, one sannyasi was telling that he was visiting this place and, and there was this uh, devotee, very wealthy devotee, and he had bought a sports car and the number plate of the car was like, for you, Krishna, right? And this he said, yeah, right, you know? What does Krishna wants a sports car for, you know? To pick up the devotees from the airport, right? So sometimes we may, you know, on the pretense that we are doing things for the pleasure of Krishna, we may, you know, use this like yukta vairagya idea, huh? But yukta vairagya means yukta vairagya. It means that we are engaging things in the service of Krishna. There cannot be, uh, you cannot practice yukta vairagya without detachment. So, you know, Krishna consciousness in that sense is so wonderful because it enables us to uh, engage our senses, to engage our proclivities, our, 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 our desires, actually in the service of the Lord. But it has to be done for the pleasure of Krishna. So therefore, it is explained that a person, he may be a brahmachari, he may be a grihasta, he may be vanaprasta, or he may be a sannyas. If his consciousness is that I am doing this for the pleasure of the Lord, for the pleasure of Krishna, they are all equally advanced. They are, they are all equally making the, they're making the same progress. Eh? The, f the best ashram is the ashram that is best suited for you. That's, that's the thing. That's why I was saying, you know, if you try to act beyond your level of, 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 of renunciation, then it's like, it's like trying to drive a plane 
you know, when you don't know how to even drive a motorbike, you know, you're going to crash. And we've seen it so many times. Uh, it's, it's, you know, so therefore we should find what is my platform and work from there. Like if you're going to go to Calcutta or you're going to go to the U.S., you can only start from here. You cannot start from somewhere else. So it's very important to understand where we are at huh? and, and, and move, move on from there. And then the point also being made here is that, uh, you know, how do we understand where we are at is by taking shelter. Well, the, the point was being here, here that Yudhisthira Maharaj now, he has been depending on his brothers and now he's fully depending on the Lord. What was that sentence again? Someone remembers? Is there's the stage of purified consciousness is what? Huh? Complete in the, the, the stage of purified fearlessness is that stage of complete independence. Huh? So this is the result. This is the, the, this is the goal. Now, Yudhisthira Maharaj, throughout his whole life, he had, you know, a, a great kingdom, his brothers, they were all devotees. But now he's come to the realization that none of these things are actually eternal and none of these things actually are permanent shelters. Eh? That, you know, that this, all these uh, friends, family, wife, children, they are all fallible soldiers. Uh, they're all fallible soldiers. The actual shelter is Krishna. So this is Vedic civilization. Vedic civilization that like we hear at the beginning of the Bhagavatam um, that is, you know, life, human life is meant for in, inquiry about the absolute truth. Life's desires should never be directed towards sense gratification. One should only desire a healthy life through self-preservation, since human life is meant for inquiry about the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's works. Hmm? So, this is right, right at the beginning of the Bhagavatam. It's explaining this is the consciousness in which we execute our duties in life, at whatever stage we are in. And ultimately, it brings us to that point, like it's been recommended in this particular purport, that right at the end of life, we are actually detached. And we can give it, we can leave it behind. Sometimes the question may be raised, does everybody need to follow this process? Do we all need to take sannyas and give a family and children? Do we? Yes or no? Huh? No need. You agree? You agree? You have to give up. Someone said something different. You have to give up. Okay. Very nice. Okay, one point there, you made a very nice point. That you're announcing that which is no good, right? No good. But what if what you have around is good. What if your wife is a good devotee, your children are good devotees, everything is favorable for your spiritual life? Do you have to renounce that? Okay, Mataji has a comment there. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, 
There is also a purport, I was just reading, I was checking, Prabhupada in the purport clearly says that you don't have to. You don't have to. Okay? You know, you don't have to. So the point here is that one, one, one must attain, thank you, one must, one must actually become detached. One has to actually become detached from that which is not favorable for Krishna consciousness. Not favorable for Krishna consciousness. So I will say that then the case is that, you know, every devotee is in a different situation because we are hearing, we're hearing different instructions, right? So therefore, uh, then we should consult with our authorities about what is actually, what should I do in my situation? The general instruction that we're seeing here is, is that one should give up, you know, one should fully dedicate himself to the service of the Lord. But now my point, the point I was making throughout the class is that what is the actual purpose? The purpose is the renunciation or is the purpose, of, or, or is the purpose bhakti? Or is the purpose to be engaged in devotional service? Is the external renunciation what is mattering here? Or is actually the renunciation in the heart? So if the situation that I am is actually favorable for my Krishna consciousness, I can remember a few years back, one, one senior Vaishnava, he approached another sannyasi and he was asking him, should they take sannyas? He is all, way over, he was all, way over 50. He had his wife, everything. He approached a very senior Vaishnava, a sannyasi, for many years. And what was his advice? Why would you like, why would you want to take sannyas? You are doing so well as a team. You're serving together so nicely. You know, you give me shelter so, so many devotees. Huh? So, many, so many people are taking advantage from you. You are a good team. Why take sannyas? For the sake of renunciation? Ultimately, as I mentioned in here, real renunciation means to act for the pleasure of Krishna. Who is more renounced? Someone who is, you know, someone who actually enters the Grihastha Ashram for the purpose of becoming, uh, you know, purified and detached. Or someone who, you know, pretends to be detached and not, you know, like do the actual right thing, which will be to, take, to, to enter the Grihastha Ashram. Who is more detached? Eh? The first one is more detached. So real actually dependence on the Lord and real detachment means by acting according to superior authority and ac acting according to what is going to please Krishna. At the same time, you know, it is, it is a fact that one must prepare his life so that, that right at the end, when it's completely, one can give everything up, finish. Even if I stay in that situation where I, I am detached. Huh? Like Prabhupada said, like you say, Prabhupada said, you know, for, for Grihastas, he was saying that externally, he said externally a, a, a Grihasta, a good Grihasta should, should act like he's hempecked. But internally, he's detached. He has no, he's totally detached. But what we find often is that the body is maybe externally detached, but internally very attached. Huh? And then the marriage is like a failure. Hmm? Lady is not properly taken care, pretending that I am something that I am not. Hmm? So the, this is, you know, I'm just trying to bring light into this idea of what actual renunciation is, what yukta vairagya is, which is our process. Huh? And as I said, you know, renunciation is not an anga of bhakti. At the same time, Rupa Goswami explains in the, in the, in the Nectar of Devotion that at the beginning, it's, well, it's, it's good. Why it is good? Why do we need renunciation at the beginning? Why? Because without it, 
we won't be able to take up we won't be able to follow the process of Krishna consciousness right? you need to have that initial little initial renunciation but as we are practicing Krishna consciousness then automatically uh, that the practice itself will bring about the, the actual renunciation full renunciation understanding that I am Krishna's servant that I my my relationship with him is is actually uh, you know of, of giving him pleasure that d developing that deep conception in the heart that actually I am me my, I am meant to lead, to give Krishna pleasure my activities are meant for his pleasure that's actually Krishna consciousness another example here uh, in the in the 70s there was one devotee he was like chanting a lot of rounds and you know he was chanting 64 rounds and then um, you know then he moved out of the compound he moved to another place so he will be with the cows away from the devotees and then the devotees were like very very you know impressed and they were reporting to Prabhupada Prabhupada was not impressed and uh, you know he was chanting uh, more and more rounds each time further and further away and one point gone and you know Prabhupada said Prabhupada said, Prabhupada said as, as far as it is what I want it means Maya you know even if it appears to be renunciation external hmm? yes Mataji there is a mic somewhere Hare Krishna could you can use the mic please the last description you gave from uh, that what the boy, the, what the man did, he did that she left, uh, left the devotees and, and so on. Is that a, a subscription? Uh, can, can you call that uh, outside uh, uh, detachment or from outside looking detached, but from inside not detached? Because my question is actually, when do you? subscribe or describe subscribe, subscribe how do you define somebody who is outerly from outside detached how do you know yes how how do i how, well, how I am i supposed to call here. somebody Some, or yeah. recognize somebody who is externally yeah Prabhupada detached, said but yeah and, and so the question is you know how do we uh, how do we see that external external detachment right so as Prabhupada said, sometimes he say, renunciation is not about changing your cloth. It's not about putting a saffron cloth, you know. It's not about, it's not about you know, like it's described here, that you grow your hair and you don't care about anything material and, you know, you're just like hanging around, you know, like, you know, like the material energy, I don't care about anything. That's actually Falgur renunciation. It's superficial, Okay. Actual renunciation means to understand that everything belongs to Krishna and I must engage everything in the service of the Lord. Like I was giving you the example about that Swami, they brought money to him and it's like, oh, you know, I don't want to have anything with this. But Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, you take a picture of me with a million dollars. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, he was driving an automobile, you know, in the in, you know, early 1900. He was making a point. Right? He was making a point. So we are not the renouncers. We are the dedicators. We dedicate everything to Krishna's service. That's actual detachment. Clear? Yeah. Use the mic so people in the, on the online can... Is at, uh, detached or renounced? The, sorry. How can I see? Can I see inter external to somebody that that person is renounced? Well, that takes your in your own practice of Krishna consciousness, as you are actually uh, you know becoming more advanced in your own spiritual life. You are able to see the detachment in other people. Uh, Prabhupada explains in the Nectar of Instruction that it takes a devotee to recognize another devotee. So we, you know, it's very, we should not judge. Uh, we, 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 it's very hard. We don't really know, okay? We don't really know. But as we are making progress, we are able to see more and more. 
and we may be seeing someone who is actually, you know, like, I mean, the, the Pandavas, they were emperors of the world. Pundarik Vidyanidhi is the, the famous story, right, with Pundarik Vidyanidhi. You know that story, right? And, and Mukunda took Gadadhar Pandit to see Pundarik Vidyanidhi, and Pundarik Vidyanidhi, he was pretending to be a materialist. You know, he had long hair, oiled in his hair, and he was beating Pan, and he was being found by, the, by, different, by different people, and he was spitting out Pan, and, and you know, Gadadhar Pandit's mind became bewildered. I think he looks like a sense gratifi gratifier, and Mukunda, he could see his mind. And immediately he just recited a verse. And what was the verse? Aho bakiyanstan akala kutan. Say, how can I take shelter of woman merciful and he who gave the position of a mother to that one who came to poison him, Putana? And as soon as Pundarik Vidanidi heard this verse, he, f he ripped his cloth on and he fell on the floor in ecstasy. He was actually depending on Krishna. He was, you know, that was his, that was his, where his attraction was. Akinchana gocharan, right? We're hearing that you are the property of those who are, uh, you know, materially impoverished. Huh? Right? We are, you, are, you know, you can only, only those, who, only those who have no longer any material aspiration can call you with a sincere feeling. So we are hearing this through the Bhagavatam, this point. But what it means, what actually means that we're no longer aspiring for these things. That's no longer the goal of my life. Even though I may have some material comforts, I am not depending on these comforts. My, my, my actual goal is Krishna. Hmm? There's another famous story with the, you know, the Ramanujacharya, right? And, and the disciples. There were Sangrihastas and some, there were Brahmacharis and and the brahmacharis were attached to their copings, you know, right? And, and, and the grihastas, then even when the, the jewels were taken off, they were like, you know, take it, it's for them, right? So I'm, we are all in different situations. I need to finish at nine, otherwise I'll get really chastised badly. We're all in different situations. What, what I should do in my situation may be different to what you have to do. And that's why we need to always act on the superior guidance. Yeah. And in that way, we are always protected by the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'll answer one more question, uh, Prabhu. Yeah. Hey, Krishna. Uh, I'd like to ask if the idea of renunciation uh, is uh, itself um, a form of attachment. Uh, because Say I know yeah. that uh, in other religions, this, this uh, idea is someone, it's something that uh, we should. Uh, Closer, a little closer. I get, I get it off. So uh, I, I want to know if it is a form of attachment and if we should eliminate it. Are you saying, I, I, I didn't fully hear, let me just ref repeat. You're saying yeah, that renunciation can also be a form of attachment. Is that yeah, what you're saying? The, yeah, the yeah. idea of renunciation. That's the point. That, that's another point. That we, we may become attached to our, you know, detachment for, you know, our, 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 to being detached, to being seen detached. Tell us to those who were in the Brahmachari Ashram for many years and get married. You know, we are attached to being renounced. But that's not favorable for Krishna consciousness. You're still a Brahmachari in the Grihastha Ashram. And the wife is suffering and you are renounced. That's not being renounced. That's being attached. You do your duty, man. Now you have to look after, after your wife. You have to look after your children. You know? You, 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 which we should understand actually what is uh, real renunciation. And real renunciation means to engage everything, my body, my mind, my words, my, my possession, in the service of the Lord. That's actual renunciation for the pleasure of Krishna. It's not to falsely renounce something which in the beginning is not mine anyway. <laughs> And I have to finish now because it's f after 9 o'clock. Just before I came, I was told, finish at 9. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada Kiya. Grantarashi Madhbhagavatam Kiya. Nitai Gora Premanande Haribo. Thank you.